Did you know that more than a billion people have some degree of hearing loss? It can have a profound impact on a person's emotional, mental, and cognitive well-being. There's also a long and rich history of cutting-edge tech being used in devices that are meant to help us hear better. And yet, it's not something we talk much about. I'm Jennifer Strong, and this is SHIFT. Now here on the steering column is a device called Auto Cruise. You simply set the speed you want. Self-driving robo-taxis are already on the road in two US cities. How the disc rotates, a mirror reflects the light in the way that depends on how the signal was recorded. This is the 100 terabyte action I present to you Electro, the Mono Man. Ladies and gentlemen. I would say that one of my greatest skills is my ability to interact with you. This episode, it's the latest installment of our oral history project. Support for this podcast comes from Motific, bridging the gap between concept and deployment by accelerating deployment and helping ensure compliance throughout the process. Visit motific.ai to learn more. In the late 1920s, a guy called Albert Einstein tried to develop a hearing aid for his girlfriend who was an opera singer and she was deaf and she needed a device that was small, that would fit into a pocket and not on a whole shelf. He stopped that because of World War II and he moved from Germany to the US, but he has a patent on hearing instruments. Uh, My name is Stefan Launer. I am a physicist by training and I am the VP of Audiology and Health Innovation for Sonova where I'm working on basic research, clinical science, related to new features and functions for hearing care and hearing instruments. Oh, the history of devices that help with hearing is pretty fascinating. Um, And and basically, it all started, um, I think, in the 15th century, when people realized that tubes might help to amplify sounds. And it started with the realization that people who were hard of hearing might not be dumb, but they might simply be hard of hearing. And then people started to try to find ways to interact with hearing impaired people. They developed sign language on the one side and they developed technologies on the other side. And I'm starting that early because it's incredibly interesting to look at the first tubes where people from the get-go tried to hide these tubes and these amplification systems. So one very interesting aspect from my end always is that people compare hearing loss with vision loss and and, and vision problems. And I think uh, this is a flawed uh, comparison or analogy because when you think of vision and vision problems and people wearing glasses, typically these people are considered to be highly intellectual. And I think that roots back to the mid ages when people started to use the first glasses at all. And and back in, in these days, it was the scholars, the intellectual people, the people who could read at all. So it was the super smart people of the society back then. And I think in the course of history and over the centuries, this is the association that people have. If you have glasses, you are a smart one. Whereas people who had been hearing impaired, they were al- always considered to not be able to understand. And to understand has two meanings. I don't understand because I didn't hear, or I didn't understand because I'm not smart enough. So people who were hard of hearing for many centuries were considered to be deaf and dumb. So it is a completely different association. And people with a hearing loss also didn't have any social rights. So for example, if a person was hearing impaired or deaf, They were not allowed to inherit any family wealth. And in the 16th century, that caused quite a bit of problem because think of societies like in Spain, where the noble families would always um, marry within the family and you would have a lot of uh, genetic hearing losses. So 
in one place in Spain, a noble family had two sons, and uh, they bo were both uh, hearing impaired. So all the wealth of this family would, it would all be lost. And then a monk came along, and this monk had another problem, because if he couldn't talk to the, to the two men, he couldn't provide them and give them absolution. So the souls of these two young people would go to hell and not to heaven. So the noble family had a problem and the monk had a problem and they teamed up and the monk developed a way to interact the first time with these young men and could um, prove that they were not dumb at all. They were just hearing impaired and he found the first way to interact through sign language and after that the development of sign language took off. When you look at hearing instruments, you know, um, I talked about how Albert Einstein has a patent on miniaturizing a hearing instrument to fit it into a handbag. One of the key drivers to develop hearing instruments, if you look back at history, was always to hide it, to make it smaller, to make it invisible. And you also see that in the age of the electronics taking off around 1920s. There was a huge push to always make these devices smaller and smaller and smaller. And in the mid 50s, there was a big technology leap by the introduction of the transistors and later on by the development of the ICs, the computer chips that we all are so aware of. The devices have to be reliable. They have to operate for a long time on the body. So hearing instrument technology is quite cutting edge. And so always the latest and uh, greatest technologies um, were used in the development of these devices. And in the 50s, we had the body-worn devices. Then later on in the 60s, people developed the first devices that could be placed behind the ear. And then we developed much smaller loudspeakers that would fit into the ear or in the hearing instruments. In the mid-90s, people started to use um, real chips, integrated circuits in the hearing instruments, and started to uh, develop algorithms that would amplify and process the sound. And that came with the notion that the inner ear is not just a passive amplifier and a passive sensor. The human inner ear or any mammalian inner ear is a highly sensitive super active analyzing element. And if people suffer from a central neural hearing loss, this element, the first stage of signal processing in the brain is basically damaged. And the inner ear loses all its ability to analyze, to distinguish, to separate sounds. So hearing loss is far more than only hearing the world softer. It is as if your ear speaks in a foreign language, in a language you are not familiar with to the brain. And that's why hearing impaired people often hear that something has been said, but they by no means understand what has been said. One of the big major breakthroughs in our technology and hearing instrument technology was the introduction of so-called digital signal processing devices in the late 1990s, early 2000s, and was capable of integrating many more functionalities in the hearing instruments that tremendously help hearing impaired people in daily life. So we uh, conceived new schemes for amplifying and processing the sounds. We um, developed algorithms that were able to cancel or reduce the very annoying howling or feedback sounds that hearing instruments often have. Yeah, everybody knows that, you know. And we also introduced a lot of technologies that can help improve speech intelligibility in noisy and challenging environments. So in larger social gatherings, where hearing impaired people typically have most of the problems because they are not capable to separate out different sound sources. And here, directional microphone technologies, first time introduced in 1994, have significantly improved the performance of the systems and uh, provide great benefit also in noisy conditions to hearing impaired people. And this topic, improving speech intelligibility in noisy conditions, is also still one of the 
big, big goals and objectives for driving further innovation that we have, that we have had for 20 years, that we have today and that we will have in the future. And one of the great breakthroughs that we are currently experiencing is the introduction of technologies from artificial intelligence or based on artificial intelligence that allow us to, in a conversation condition, identify what is a target voice, what is target speech that we want to enhance, that we want to amplify, that we want to extract from a noisy background. And here, um, artificial intelligence and the algorithms based on that provide a huge step forward. So when we talk about artificial intelligence and want to introduce it into hearing instruments, the research has shown that in order to really benefit from AI-based algorithms, we need to introduce large, powerful, complex, so-called deep neural networks in the hearing instruments, which require a lot of computational power. And in order to provide this computational power, we need very specific neural processing units in the hearing instruments. That's a very different computational architecture than we, what we had in the past. And this requires us to really develop these new technologies, these new computer chips at a power consumption level that a hearing instrument can afford. And that is very, very low. So that's technically a very high, very large, very big challenge. But with today's technologies that is feasible, and uh, we are introducing these new chip technologies now uh, and see a great benefit from using them for our hearing impaired patients. So when we think about hearing care today, in the past, we often looked at hearing, speech understanding, hearing the TV, hearing the birds chirp and so on and so forth. But our view on hearing, hearing care has changed significantly, I would say, in the past 10 years. And we are putting hearing care in a much broader context of healthy living and aging. Hearing is a fundamental part of communication, of uh, being socially active. If uh, people develop a hearing loss, they typically often socially withdraw. Uh, they have poorer health conditions. And uh, lately there has been a lot of discussion on how uh, hearing loss impacts uh, the development of uh, cognitive decline and in particular um, dementia. One prediction is I think we will see lots of new technologies. We also see quite a bit of technology convergence between the earbuds and the hearing instruments. So in the earbuds you see the application of noise cancelling headsets and hearing instruments eventually might benefit from that technology. Chip technologies will become more powerful and, uh, and more affordable. And hopefully also with all the trends around the earbuds, people will accept solutions in and around the ear much more. So we might reach people who have listening difficulties at an earlier age and will be able to help them earlier than the average 65-year-olds or 70-year-olds that we see in the shops um, today. Support for this podcast comes from OutShift. Cisco's incubation engine's newest AI innovation, Motific, is bridging the gap between concept and deployment, accelerating deployment while reducing security, trust, compliance, and cost risks. Motific provides advanced policy controls to prevent unauthorized access to sensitive data and helps ensure compliance throughout the process. Visit motific.ai to learn more. This episode was produced by me and Emma Silicons and mixed by Garrett Lang with original music from him and Jacob Gorski. Thanks for listening. I'm Jennifer Strong. Support for this podcast comes from OutShift. Cisco's incubation engine's newest AI innovation, Motific, is bridging the gap between concept and deployment, accelerating deployment while reducing security, trust, compliance, and cost risks. 
Matific provides advanced policy controls to prevent unauthorized access to sensitive data and helps ensure compliance throughout the process. Visit motific.ai to learn more. From PR.